Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name's Ken Thompson. Um, I'm a technical evangelist at Microsoft. Uh, so I'm part of our one commercial partner team, uh, and I work in Australia with uh, eight ISVs, uh, so independent software vendors, software, Aussie software companies, um, helping them build their products uh, on the Microsoft stack. Um, so previously, I was um, a product manager in Redmond, so I just moved back uh, at the end of last year, so in the Microsoft Azure team, uh, looking after DevOps. Um, but my primary focus was on open source technologies, so working with partners, communities, uh, and engineering teams on things like uh, Chef, Jenkins, Ansible, Terraform, and the like. So today, we are going to talk about uh, to hot dog or not to hot dog. So first, we're going to have a look at the challenge, which is you know not, not really a challenge. It's a bit, bit more of a fun talk than a reality session. Um, we're going to have a look at cognitive developer APIs and how you can leverage these cool off-the-shelf uh, APIs as a developer with not a lot of AI machine learning expertise in-house, how you can apply uh, DevOps and specifically CI, CD uh, to the development of these APIs, uh, with a little bit of PaaS and then probably Q&A over drinks uh, by the looks of it. Please, God. What would you say if I told you there is an app on the market? We're past that part. Just demo it. OK. Let's start with a hot dog. Oh, shit. Yes! It works! Oh, motherfuck! Huzzah! Jin Yang, my beautiful little Asiatic friend, I'm going to buy you the palapa of your life. We will have 12 posts, braided palm leaves. You'll never feel exposed again. I'm gonna be rich. Fuck you, Guilfoyle. Do pizza. Yes, do pizza. Yeah. Do pizza. yeah. Hey, Zach. Not hot dog? Wait, what the fuck? Eh? That's, that's it? It only does hot dogs? No, and a not hot dog. <laughs> All right, so that is the challenge. We are building not hot dog. Um, <clears throat> so I set this, um, set this up as a little bit of a challenge for myself. So I don't come from a programming background, so I wanted to learn some Python this year, and a bunch of my customers are looking at AI, ML. Um, and I actually, despite my DevOps experience, I mostly play with tools like Jenkins and Terraform and Chef. Uh, I haven't used much of Microsoft's first party uh, services. So through this talk, I um, basically had to play and learning some new tools myself. So with Azure, there's, there's a number of different ways we can do machine learning. So we've got raw compute, um, so CPU, GPU, uh, as well as FPGA, so field programmable gate arrays. Uh, which is basically programmable silicon. Um, and we've been putting FT FPGA uh, cards on all our servers for a number of years. So we don't just have like a specific cluster or set of uh, FPGA servers. They're on a whole fleet. Um, and they power things like if you're going to use uh, accelerated networking on Azure, uh, it's actually leveraging the FPGA uh, in the host. <coughs> Then we've got a number of um, basically managed services on top of that. So if you're looking to use Databricks, we've got Azure Databricks, which is a managed service offering. We've got Azure Machine Learning, uh, which is for Python-based uh, machine learning development. Also does a bunch of DevOpsy stuff, like managing those models, um, versioning, uh, and things like that, as well as machine learning VMs, which are basically um, VMs that are bootstrapped with a whole bunch of um, machine learning uh, tools uh, so you can get started pretty quickly. We've got support for any kind of popular framework um, out there, so um, Onyx, uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch is uh, starting to get quite popular, um, and support for all the kind of standard uh, data science tools uh, out there. But what we're going to look at is these pre-trained models. Um, which are basically APIs that you can either directly interact with uh, and use our models. Um, and then some of these, uh, we actually provide the ability to do some customization uh, of those pre-trained models. So <clears throat> in terms of the vision, we've got things like uh, computer vision, uh, which, you know, the example, it'll detect, you know, what is in the image. It'll detect people, how old they are, what sex they are. 
Um, their sentiment, are they happy, sad, angry? We have video exit indexing things, um, text to speech, speech to text, uh, language understanding service that you can use in bots to basically translate um, human uh, language into something uh, API or computer can understand and trigger actions off that. Um, but specifically today, we're going to look at uh, custom vision. So Azure Custom Vision uh, basically allows you to, it provides um, some pre-trained uh, image classifiers that are based on uh, ResNet or AlexNet. Um, and we have a number of different uh, kind of versions that are uh, pre-trained to specific domains, um, which I'll show you. Uh, and you basically just upload a bunch of images, you tag them, you tell them what the classifier, you know, what these are, um, it, it will basically learn that. Uh, and it uses active learning, so you can, uh, any kind of images that don't get correctly identified, you can reuse those uh, in the model to, to help train and improve uh, your classifier, so you can start you know, improving the version of your classifier. Uh, and importantly, in uh, so this, the example I'm going to use is we're going to hit an API endpoint up in Azure, um, but in the real world, uh, for example, in industrial use cases, uh, you want that image classifier really close to what you're doing. Uh, if you've got like 100,000 tin cans flying past on an image conveyor belt and you're using that for um, detection of anomalies in that production line, you want that running local. So you can actually export these models uh, and run them locally, um, including uh, as a Docker container, so you can run them anywhere you want. So some example use cases outside of uh, not hot dog. Um, so you can use this thing, some use cases are like shelf availability in retail, so detecting if a particular item needs restocking. Um, you, we've got retail customers using these at, at kiosks to detect if someone's happy, sad, kind of their rough age um, group and whether they're male or female to determine what kind of ad they should put up in front of them. Um, and in industrial use cases, which I've already touched on. So <clears throat> the example I'm going to show is super, super simple. Um, this is getting towards um, a real world uh, example of what you would do. Um, so you can basically throw even kind of five images at this um, classifier and label them, and it'll get you reasonably accurate. Uh, but if you want to do a you know, properly real-world example, you want to give it as many images as possible. Uh, the more images you can give it, the better. Different lighting conditions, different angles of the object you're trying to detect. Um, and also uh, photos with um, things that might trick it up. Um, so maybe uh, oranges and tomatoes, and the tomato is not quite ripe, and it thinks it's an orange, um, or detects them both as the same thing in the one image, you can feed it you know, images with multiple tags um, to get more accuracy. So ideally, you want to give it as many images as possible, different angles, different lighting, um, and you can keep retraining through active learning on those uh, edge use cases. So let's have a quick look at um, Azure Custom Vision. I got a multiple monitor thing. There we go. All right, that's better. Um, all right, <clears throat> so custom vision, um, it's just customvision.ai. Um, <clears throat> it's free to sign up. Um, and you simply go in here. All right, and <clears throat> you go to new project. We give the project a name. I've already got an existing uh, resource group on Azure to provision this into, so I'm going to select that. Um, and here's where you can select um, a couple of predefined domains. So uh, we've, we've pre-trained the model on particular things like food, landmarks, um, retail, et cetera. Um, and you'll see the compact ones here. The compact ones. Uh, are the ones that you can actually export as uh, a Docker container to run that locally or run that somewhere else. Um, so let's click food. And simple as basically adding some images. So I probably try, chose the wrong one for this particular example, but we can add these images. 
of hemlock tree. You have to give it at least two different images and tags. Oops. All right, so I'll add some forks. And then we can train it. <clears throat> and it's now going to take those images, take those tags, um, and apply it to the classifier. And then we can do a quick test. And we'll take an image. So this is in the test folder. So these are images that we didn't train on. Uh, we can throw it a fork. And then it's going to tell us it's a fork. So pretty cool, uh, pretty simple stuff. You can give it whatever images are relevant to your uh, business, your industry, your use case that you, you're doing. Um, and quite easy you know, to get going with no machine learning knowledge, no data science knowledge. Uh, you can readily make these uh, models uh, that can provide you know, pretty, pretty awesome value to your uh, to your business and your stakeholders. But dragging and dropping on a web interface isn't particular DevOpsy. So we also provide um, SDKs uh, for our custom or for all our cognitive services, um, which means that you can use code to train uh, train these services. Uh, and by checking in our code and our images, that means we can version not only the machine learning model that we create, that we're going to ping and ask it what this image is, uh, but it means we've versioned and um, got in context the images um, and the version of the algorithm that we use to train that, uh, which is really important if you're looking at applying AI to use cases, especially in you know, e EU with GDPR. Um, because people have, you know, if we're going to apply it to an example um, of an AI engine that's going to decide whether I get a loan or not, or whether I get <clears throat> a particular insurance premium or not, I have the right to refusal as a consumer. Um, and then the business who um, basically made that decision has to justify why that decision was made. So you have to, you can't just say the AI said, you know, Ken is not eligible. You have to say, you know, this is why these are the data points, this is what we trained it on, and this is why the AI made the decision or the recommendation it did. Um, and because we can check it, in, check it in as code, it means we can do CI CD. So this is kind of a pretty high level uh, look at basically the solution uh, that I've put together to show you. So for the uh, image classifier, we're going to first check it in um, in GitHub. That's going to trigger uh, Azure Pipelines, uh, which is our CI CD uh, pipeline tool. That is going to trigger off a build of that um, classifier. And it's going to send that up to Custom Vision. And it's going to label um, a new API for every build. So every time I do a build with a new set of images and a new set of tags, it's going to create a new um, API, uh, which is versioned and labeled, uh, which I can then push out um, through my environments. Uh, and I'm using a, a crazy new technique uh, called environment variables. Uh, and on boot up of my uh, web app, it's basically just going to pass it which version of the um, API endpoint I want it to use, uh, which means I can decouple the web application development from the uh, AI model that I want to promote through environments. So I can promote those um, individually. Um, and then my web app uh, is going to check in. I'm going to check in my Python code. Um, it's going to do a build and then uh, push that out to Azure App Service, which is our platform as a service uh, offering. So I've just got a pretty basic Python Flask uh, web app. I didn't need any you know, bells or whistles to run it. Uh, so App Service is really great to do that. Um, I've also got some gates, which I'll show you. So it'll push it out to dev, and then 
Uh, I've got continuous deployment set up, um, and the gates I've got set up are actually just doing a basic uh, HTTP check to see if it's up and it hasn't had errors for five minutes. And if that's all good, it's going to progress uh, to test, and it's going to keep rolling through to production. And you can set up any um, tests you want for those gates. You can set up manual approvals. Uh, you can set up a combination of those. Um, and then the end user is going to hit the, hit the uh, web app. It's going to use the version um, of the model uh, that I've specified in the environment variables. Uh, and then I'm also leveraging Key Vault um, to securely store the secrets, so the, uh, the keys uh, to access my API, um, both for build and, and runtime. So let's have a look at that. All right, so I'm using Azure Pipelines for this. Um, uh, it's the artist formerly known as Visual Studio Team Services, um, to answer Anthony's question from earlier. Um, now, we've basically relabeled uh, Visual Studio Team Services to Azure DevOps Services. That's kind of an umbrella thing. Uh, but the important thing is we made them all um, available as individual products, so you don't need to buy the whole suite. You can just get uh, Azure Pipelines. We have repos for managed repositories, um, artifacts to store artifacts. Uh, but it also has a marketplace of like thousands of other integrations. So if you want to use Jenkins for builds, you can do that. Uh, if you want to use Artifactory for artifacts, you can do that. Um, so very flexible. Um, <coughs> we also released um, a GitHub Marketplace offering for this. So you can basically go to the GitHub Marketplace, add it to your repository. Uh, it's free. Uh, if you have open source projects, so they're not private projects, uh, you'll get 10 concurrent build pipelines for free uh, with unlimited minutes. Um, and if you have uh, private repos, that's also free, but you only get one uh, concurrent uh, pipeline for that. So really encouraging um, open source usage and enabling kind of anything to use uh, CICD. Um, it'll support um, Linux, Mac, and Windows build pools. So we have managed build pools available. Uh, you can specify what version of Linux you want to run, what version of Windows, Mac, um, or you can bring your own um, Docker images, uh, or you can even use your, your own build agent. So if you want to run builds on-premise or in another cloud on Azure, uh, you can do that as well. So. In here, we have our not hot dog classify build. Um, and I just wanted to show you a couple of different ways that we can specify um, our jobs. So I'll show you the visual editor later. So we've got a visual editor, but we also support uh, YAML. So you can check it in with your code. Um, so this, this um, build pipeline is defined uh, in my code in my repository. It's basically saying I want to build on Ubuntu 16.04, specifies my Python version, um, and it's just going to run my, my script to install it, which is really just installing my uh, Python requirements and then running my app, uh, and then passing in my, <coughs> my keys to do the builds uh, as secrets from Azure Key Vault. So to show you what we're... what we're doing. <laughs> so I am a beginner at, uh, at Python and programming, so it's pretty basic what it does. Um, all I'm doing is running through an images folder, and I was grabbing all the subfolders in there and uploading the images within the subfolder and applying the name of that subfolder as the tag. So anything in the folder hot dog will be tagged as hot dog. Anything in the folder burger will be labeled as burger. Um, and it just iterates through that uh, images folder till it's done and then kicks off the training model. So doing the same thing uh, that I just did previously like, via the web interface, um, but via, via a Python script that I'm executing as a build pipeline. Um, and then it's going to, the artifact it's producing is just that version number of the build, so the, the version number of the API endpoint that I've just built, which I can then uh, deploy through my environments. 
So in terms of um, releasing this through our environment, um, I'll show you this one because we've got gates. And I think I've got the visual editor set up on this one. OK, so this is the visual editor. Um, and in my environment, I've got dev, test, staging, production, pretty classic kind of setup. Um, and we can click in here. <coughs> and like I showed you YAML before, um, this is just the visual editor version. Um, so pretty simple, you can just add in tasks. Um, as I said before, there's like a mark. So these are the built-in tasks. I can add additional tasks from the marketplace, or you can build your own uh, custom tasks, uh, either out, I think, using Node or uh, .NET. Um, so here, if I wanted to use Jenkins Host or I wanted to use Chef, um, I can just add, uh, add those steps into my, my tasks. Uh, I'm deploying to Azure App Service, so there's any built task uh, to do that. And if I go back here, we can also see here uh, I have uh, my web app. Yeah, so here I can specify um, how I'm triggering it. So I'm saying deploy the stage after the last stage is complete. And then I have uh, these gates set up which is just going to query Azure Monitor. In Azure Monitor, I have an alert set up to just monitor HTTP to check that the, uh, the web service is up and it hasn't had any errors for the past five minutes. Uh, and then I can also add in you know, pre-deployment approvals as well. And while it's nice to do all the continuous delivery and reports and stuff, it's, you know, it's not best practice to get those uh, reports as emails. So, you know, it's really easy to make a, a customized dashboard. So I can have, you know, both the web team and the data science team uh, seeing a common dashboard. They can see where everything's at. We can see, um, you know, what, re what release of our code is running in which environment, which ver version is running where. And to show you a better dashboard, uh, rather than a, a Contoso Example, this is the actual dashboard of the Azure DevOps uh, engineering team. So a bit, uh, bit of inception moment. They, they use the own, their own product to build their own product, obviously. Um, and it's also used like across uh, Microsoft. So Windows, Office, um, we all you use this to engineer and uh, release our products, whether they're web-based or we ship them as binaries. Um, and this is an example of the uh, work and triage for the Azure DevOps team. So, you know, we can see active bugs, pri priority. We can see um, our, our flow over the previous sprints. We can see our cycle time, uh, all this good stuff. So you don't have to send, um, you know, compile manual reports every sprint or week and provide them to your manager. You just give them a dashboard and it's all real time. All right, so this is the Azure portal. So I'm using Azure App Service, which is our platform as a service offering. Um, and App Service actually has some nice kind of DevOpsy stuff uh, just built in. So I just provided some Python code, and you can get that running pretty, like even via our CLI, just you AZ web app up in your Python directory if you're logged in, and it's gonna spin it up and create a plan for you. Um, and you can pretty easily come in here and, you know, just monitor 2080. I can do, um, you know, A-B testing. I can uh, swap my production slot with my staging slot. So I can put my staging slot up there. If it's all good, I do a swap. So those slots are just behind a, um, a VIP, so a load balancer. Um, and it's just going to do um, a swap for DNS. Um, so some pretty nice things that are built in. Um, you don't have to worry about it um, as a developer. You just come and, come and leverage it. So what I wanted to do, though, was uh, I actually I might show you the app first. All right. 
<coughs> Ignore. All right, so this is, this is the app, um, not hotdog.co. Um, so I've basically trained this on a couple of different kind of hot dogs, um, and it'll just tell you the, the probability of what kind of hot dogs it is. So train it on Costco hot dogs, Chicago style, and uh, chili dogs. So I haven't, I haven't given it much images. I just went to you know, Bing Images and grabbed the first kind of 20 of the group. But I have got some samples that I didn't train it on that we can shoot up to it. So that was a photo of a Costco hot dog. So I've detected that. Um, so I'll do that, but I thought it'd be uh, cool to get a bit of audience participation uh, in the mix. So what I will do is I'm gonna deploy straight to production a different version of my uh, classifier. So could and horribly, I got a box of squeaky dog toys delivered from China yesterday and took a bunch of photos uh, of said toys um, last night. And I'll show you what they are. So they're not... Not the uh, most professional of shots. Um, and really just kind of, you know, throwing this together to show you how, how easy it is and how quick it is uh, to train. Um, so these are the photos I've set up. And then... Let's go back here. All right, so I brought said toys with me. <laughs> so I'll get you, if you humor me, <laughs> to take some photos and test out the app. Hands, anyone? Oh, oh, let's try again. We also have some... Uh, Edge use cases here. <laughs> Hamburger, anyone? Oh. <laughs> All right, last one. Oh, into dead space. <laughs> so um, if you go there now, hopefully, if you go to nothotdog.co, uh, we should hopefully and I left myself one prop to use. Should hopefully work. So I'll just check I'm mirroring still. All right, so if I do another photo, hopefully this will tell me that it's a T-bone. All right, hopefully it's deployed. Hey, there we go, 87% chance it's a steak toy. So there we go, um, super easy to basically train those models um, and upload them. And yeah, you can apply CICD to that as well. So let's go back here. So <coughs> we only touched on like a, a few things uh, that we have at Microsoft. Um, so we touched a little bit, we had a look at um, I think Visual Studio Code. Uh, in Visual Studio, we used Azure Pipelines to do the CI/CD, uh, and then I was also using Azure Monitor um, to do 
the monitoring of the HTTP status to allow our automatic gates. Uh, but there's a bunch of other stuff that I'll be happy to talk to you about uh, over drinks if you're interested. And then I will be even more than happy to talk to you about any of this stuff um, because this is what I used to look after uh, in Redmond, which is our support for open source DevOps tools. So if you're using Chef and Terraform, Ansible, Jenkins, and you want to know how they work on Azure, we'd love to have a chat with you about it. And then we also had a brief look at some of the services that we use uh, with cognitive services. So Custom Vision is a part of that cognitive services uh, API group set. And we also looked at Azure Web App PaaS. Um, so, but there's a plethora of other you know, service uh, and deployment offerings uh, available. So in summary, uh, we had a look at the challenge to build a basically an image classifier uh, for hot dogs and how you can leverage cognitive, cognitive developer APIs in our use case, uh, Azure Custom Vision. If you want to try it out, just go to customvision.ai. Uh, I think you just need a Microsoft account, so a Microsoft personal account. Uh, you don't need to sign up for a trial or anything. You can just um, try it out by the portal. It's got the API links, all the docs links. Uh, we also had a look at CICD for cognitive APIs, so taking that API and then training it uh, using software, using code, uh, the SDKs. Um, and you can have a look at Azure Pipelines in the GitHub Marketplace. And on the next slide, I'll have a link to my GitHub repo. So I've got my, um, my classifier and my web application um, up in my GitHub repo. Um, they're Python apps, so you can run them on Azure, you can run them on AWS, you can run them wherever you want. Uh, if you want to have a play with that, um, and also, also had a look at some of the DevOps features within, within App Service in terms of that blue greens uh, and AB deployment handled natively uh, within that. So that is it. I'm way early. Uh, that is my GitHub repo. So you'll find um, the code there for the classifier and the web app if you want to have a go. Um, and that's my Twitter handle if you want to ping me um, anytime. Love to chat. And without further ado, I won't. Uh, hold us between me and beers. So thanks for, thanks for coming and thanks for listening.